My name is Outsider2522 and welcome to another Eidolon video. Today we're going to be looking at the Bubonic Conjurer, but one particular part of his kit, how to maximise cranium cooking. It's super important, let's talk about it. Just a little plug in here, 90% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed and I don't feel that's fair. If you watch this, please subscribe. It really, really helps the channel to grow. Okay, let's talk about why this class is so important. So, firstly, it's a mage, which means it's going to unlock chopping. This is going to help with your atom growth, okay? You're going to need millions of atoms, and chopping normal logs is the quickest way to get them. The Ebonic Conjurer can do that, all right? But we're not going into that in this video. Secondly, his second skill is alchemy. Probably one of the most important skills in the game. All right, alchemy is time gated, which means that you will get liquid every hour and that will help you to then you can then spend that as a resource with other resources to increase your vial levels and your bubble levels. There's two different types of bubbles. There's active bubbles which are bigger, there's passive bubbles which are smaller. This guy is going to help you to expedite your bubble growth massively. And thirdly, he comes with the lab all right, Lab is probably the biggest buff you're going to get in World 4. He will be a Lab Slave for a very long time in World 4, along with many other units. However, we're not going to focus on that, There, because basically it's, it's a very long, arduous part of the game. You don't do a lot, it's a lot of sitting around. So we're going to talk about Cranium Cooking. Now this is a kind of unique um, ability that the Bubonic Conjurer has, and the way that it works is it massively increases all gains. The reason why is because it helps your alchemy gains. Now, uh, you actually unlock this ability when you're a wizard. Is it a wizard, I believe? However, it really comes into its own... Oh no, shaman, sorry. When you're a shaman. However, it really comes into its own when you're a, when you're a conjurer. And that's down to the active farming aspect that the conjurer gets. Okay, it really, really becomes kind of the boss for AoE. Um, it's... It's phenomenal. It's, clear, it's room clearing capabilities are unreal. So let's talk about some of the things you might not know about cranium cooking and how to maximize your gains. Now, as with all skills in Eidolon, obviously the higher your library bonus, the better. So the higher book level you can get, the better you're gonna get. Um, mine's at 195 at the minute. I've got some levels to get from uh, an artifact. I've only got it as a normal. Ideally you want that as an Eldritch. Okay, once you can get as high as possible, there are a few skills you're going to want to focus on. The first one being Raise Dead. And what this does is it raises all normal mobs. When they say normal mobs, what this means is it will not work on crystal mobs and doesn't really work on bosses. So when you're in, say, Worms, which is the place most people are going to be farming towards endgame, you can constantly revive them. All right? The higher the level, the more seconds it takes off of... Uh, the more... The higher level, the more area it affects, sorry. So... Um, you can end up reviving a whole map all at once. It's a huge buff to damage and kills. The next skill that the Bubonic Conjurer is going to really want is Chemical Warfare. What this does is it just throws poison canisters out everywhere. Now, the actual damage of this is relatively low, so you actually need quite a high damage to really be clearing those end mobs. Um, but by the time you reach the end mobs, you've probably already got high damage, so it's probably not too bad. Now, um, what this will do is it will just spray out canisters everywhere. They will drop into like chemical clouds and they will stay there. Um, if you've ever done tower defense, it's kind of like the Poisonic Tower. And they will just constantly do damage over time. What this does is it synergizes really, really well with Raised Dead because as soon as, they are, as soon as they come back to life, they're already in a poison cloud, which means you're already damaging the whole room. All right, it's huge. Next, you're gonna want a couple of skills from the Shaman Tree. All right, the first one you're going to want is Auspicious Aura. And what this will do is wherever you're standing, every time you cast it, it will drop a huge wave of damage. Now, again, this wave stays for a certain amount of time and does massive damage over time. This is actually probably the Bubonic Plague Bearer's top damage dealer, mainly because it just ticks so quickly and it hits the same area. So, you know, if you're hitting bosses and stuff, this is probably the skill you're going to be using. Very, very good when using this type of play. And the final skill that's super important 
is 10 tycle. Okay, now what this does is every time you kill an enemy, you're going to get time taken off of your skills. Now with a proper setup, you can actually remove your skills immediately. So as soon as you basically, as soon as you raise, raise the dead, your skills will kill everything so quickly, Tentacle will spawn off so often that you'll be able to raise the dead instantly again. This is just part of how you start getting huge gains using Cranium Cooking. And then obviously I completely almost forgot to say this, but Cranium Cooking, you're gonna need that. What this does is every time you kill a monster, it gives you a certain amount of seconds of alchemy progress. Okay, the longer that this lasts for, the better, because the more time you have, all right? And obviously, the more time you have, the more seconds you're gonna get off. Once you put all that synergy together, which is probably why I would say Bubonic Conjurer is one of the best active classes, because the moves synergize so well together. Let's look at how we can maximize this. Also, quick little note, every time that I add more skills than what I'm showing you to my hotbar, Raise the Dead stops working automatically. Now, I don't know if this because um, the AI dies or something happens, but I do not recommend adding any more skills to your hotbar than the ones I'm showing you. So the next two pieces of the puzzle I'd actually slept on. It wasn't until an Alliance member from Aetherian came to my aid and explained to me that actually, again, I'd missed out on a few things. So the first thing to look at was Cooking Roadkill. Now this is a active bubble in alchemy and what it does is it increases your cranium cooking time. Mine's at 90%. My cranium cooking time is 100 seconds. So I'm almost doubling that to 200, nearly 200 seconds, 190 seconds worth of time I get. That's this massive, massive gain on the amount of time I can spend cranium cooking. And again, the more time you're cooking, the more alchemy points you're getting back. Throw in the 10 tycle and you can pop this off more often because this should realistically be like a once a day thing but because you're getting three seconds back well i get three seconds back every time i kill something it's not a whole day thing because those kills step up very very quickly and actually cranium cooking resets maybe about an hour all right this is part of how you get it massive there's one final tip i've got for you guys so the final tip is to change the weapon now the Bubonic Conjurer is a wizard, a mage, okay? They'd normally use a staff. However, we're not going to use a staff. We're actually going to swap to Stingers. Why are we going to swap to Stingers? The reason we're going to swap to Stingers is because of the Auspacious Aura, okay? Now, this aura only works as long as you are close to enemies. If you're using the staff, you will basically stay in one spot, which means your auras will not spread across the map. By using the Stingers, which is the highest level weapon that all classes can equip, you can spread it much further. Now, the other nice thing about Stingers is they're such a low quality weapon that you can actually afford to keep remaking them until you get the bonuses from your archers. What do I mean by bonuses? Well, ideally you'd want extra stats. Okay, on my particular role, I didn't get the extra stats. But I did get the extra weapon, uh, the extra upgrade slot. With three upgrade slots, <clears throat> and again, because of the cost of the weapon, these are worth gambling on and using the best weapon upgrade stones from the Cattle Crook boss, boss. So, you can actually get even more stats on this weapon, which takes a relatively poor weapon and makes it sort of average, okay? But because of how much damage auspicious, auspicious Aura does and how much area it affects, your gains are going to be huge. Now, by switching out all of these things, and again, I'm not the top of the tier, I'm not creme de la creme, I'm aware of that. I went from maybe, I think it was about 30,000 seconds to over 100,000 seconds every time I do this. On top of that, I was, I was able to Cranium Cook once per day. When I start to understand the mechanics better, I can now cook every hour. So what I actually do is sometimes I leave it on overnight. I activate the, the jewel in the lab. That means that you get a, um, that you get a lower cooking rate, but you have a higher capacity because what happens is unless I'm active and I'm watching every hour, I fill my alchemy. Now, by putting on the lab bonus overnight, <clears throat> I fill up four times more and still get all the gains. 
phenomenal. Your alchemy will fly through the roof. If you need to upgrade your liquid levels, you're gonna have so much liquid to do it now. When you need to upgrade your vials, not a problem. When you need to upgrade your bubbles, not a problem. This is gonna increase your gains tenfold, okay? If you found this information useful, or you've enjoyed the video in any way, shape or form, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, you've been amazing. Take care.